and welcome to the Discover History channel. As you're probably aware, Discover History uh, prides itself on local history and we are fortunate to live in the city of Worcester. If you've not been to Worcester, when all this thing blows over, do come and visit it. Worcester is an absolutely ancient city. We have now evidence that Worcester goes back as a settlement as far back as around about 700 to 750 BC. So that puts us as a very old uh, Bronze Age settlement. However, we have had people walking around in Worcester and Worcestershire um, from at least, at least 10,000 BC. So we're a very ancient city and it's worth coming to visit, if not just for the wonderful medieval Worcester Cathedral. Anyway, today, because we specialise in local history, we decided to give you a few facts about Worcester City, and in particular, one of the grand and one of the most iconic buildings for Worcester, not just the cathedral, but Worcester Guild Hall. You've probably been in Worcester Guild Hall for one reason or another. They now do weddings there. You can watch uh, a Peaky Blinders fight night that they hold uh, annually now and um, there's all sorts of things including all the wildlife trust and rspb and all these sort of charity coffee mornings and that that you can visit anyway we're going to look at the guild hall's older history in particular and i'm not sure if you're aware but worcester's had a guild hall on that site for hundreds and hundreds of years However, the one that stands there now only dates from about 1721, 1722, so it's relatively modern. Um, we've had a guild hall on that site since the 13th century. Now, in 1189, Worcester gets his first charter from Richard the Lionheart, and that 1189 charter basically said Worcester doesn't have to go down to London to pester the king. It can now decide for itself the prices of things within the city. There were other things as well, but it was mainly prices. So if we wanted to sell bread at this price or beer at that price, um, we could do it ourselves. From 1189, we had a guild. A guild is basically a club society, uh, um, very much like uh, some of the organisations that exist today, where they come together and they meet. So we had a brotherhood, a guild, a collective, a, a, a club for all the traders and merchants in the city. However, they used to meet at many pubs. That was where most of the decision making was made. Some people say the best decisions are actually made in pubs. I don't know. However, in 1227, under uh, Henry III, we do actually get another charter. And that's it there. Not the original one, unfortunately. They would not let me take that. They're all now housed at the Hive, where they're protected and they're looked after at a temperature-regulated uh, environment. Now, this 1227 charter, I always say, is actually the birth certificate of Worcester Guild Hall. Because it basically says... There are lots of other things that we can have in privileges of having a guild of merchants. But it does actually say we can now build a building for governing the city from. A place where the guilds can meet. Instead of visiting the many pubs, we can now meet in one place. And that's why I always say the 1227 Charter is in fact the birth certificate of the Guild Hall. Not the present one, but the original one. Now, the Guild Hall was built from that point onwards. So from 1227 onwards, the Guild Hall would have been constructed, possibly made out of wood, possibly even half timbered. So it could be stone and timber. We don't actually know what it looked like. There are no pictures. There's obviously no photographs. There's absolutely nothing to tell us what it looked like. If you go to some big cities, including places like York, you can see what a medieval Guild Hall looks like probably something like that we do actually know from archaeological work in particular when they put in a lift shaft in the north wing of the building um, that the original building would have stood on the same site but the weird thing is you would not have seen it from the high street because as we know there were shops running along the high street and the guild hall was set back but the original medieval guild hall made a number of laws these were known as ordinances at the time 
and we have a few of them here courtesy of the Archive and Archaeology Service of Worcestershire County Council. Um, we have Ordnance 18 for example and this really shows the importance of Worcester. The said wool to be weighed in the guild hall of the said city by the buyer and seller. And that's because Worcester is built on the wool trade. All before Worcestershire sauce, Worcester bone china and all the other things, Worcester was actually built on wool. So wool had to be sold, it had to be weighed at Worcester Guild Hall. Um, there's Ordnance 24. No entrails of any manner of beasts nor pots of blood to be cleaned away on the day. In other words, all the disgusting jobs should be done at night only. Um, one of my favourite ones is Ordnance 26. It always sticks in my head. No chimneys of timber to be suffered nor thatched housing within the city. And that's because Worcester had many, many fires in the medieval period, uh, almost bringing Worcester to the ground, almost burning Worcester to the ground. Um, so we actually banned thatch roofing within the city walls. Um, we ban timber chimneys. Sounds almost like a chocolate teapot scenario or a chocolate fire guard. Uh, people did have timber framed chimneys. Uh, and then another one, um, no manner of person play at palm or tennis within the guild hall. So when this thing blows over and we can go out again, visit the guild hall, but no playing tennis inside the guild hall. Completely banned from at least the 15th century. But eventually Worcester Guild Hall became older. Uh, it started to develop cracks, things started to fall down within it. And then we also have a very turbulent time, which is the Battle of Worcester. During the Battle of Worcester, we know the Guild Hall was used as a makeshift hospital. It was also used as uh, possibly even a headquarters building, some sort of meeting place. But eventually it was that badly damaged from the fighting, the storming of the city by Parliament forces, that the Guild Hall had to be removed. It had to be knocked down and they found a replacement. This is a sketch, a drawing more than a sketch, of Worcester Guild Hall. Looks very similar to how it stands today. Uh, cost just over £3,000. The wings were added on as a separate entity, so that was the original building. But I do like the fact we have people on the cobbled high street, including a couple chatting on horseback just there. Um, this, we know, was uh, uh, came about by a man called Thomas White, who was mainly the carver for all the carvings that you see on the Guild Hall. Now, when we can go out again and visit the Guild Hall or walk along the high street without just going out for uh, exercise, um, have a look because Thomas White has signed the building. Uh, his name is actually on it at the front. And you also need to look out for two snails. These are the little logos for Thomas White. There are two snails on that building, tiny little snails. And I won't spoil it. That's a mission for you. You go and find them. But the Guild Hall continued as it is, like this, as the county courts for Worcestershire. Which is why when you look at the top, you'll also see a carving above the Hanoverian coat of arms of blind justice. Holding the sword and the scales and completely blindfolded not going to judge a person by how they look but just taking the evidence this was the county court for years and it only ceased being the county courts when they built the new shire hall or crown court in Forgate street but saying that there were still some cases going on there as late as the 1920s but the Guild Hall was eventually taken over, as it stands today, as the main building for the council and, in particular, the office of the Mayor of the City of Worcester. So, hopefully, this has given you a little insight into one building that's uh, in Worcester that you can visit when this thing blows over. Do have a wander around in there and please remember, Discover History run walking tours. 36 walking tours of Worcester. But one of those walking tours is of the Guild Hall. Why not book a separate Guild Hall tour? Maybe for one person, maybe for a group when this thing blows over. It's worth having a closer look at the building we walk around or walk past every single week. Anyway, what are we doing next? 
that's up to you. Let us know by subscribing and commenting or maybe going on our Facebook and Twitter and telling us what you want to see. If you want to see or hear about another of Worcester's buildings, a cookery or recipe demonstration, it's all up to you. Stay safe everyone and see you soon. Bye bye.